Uh, Nerds will inherit the copier world. Ha <laughs> ha That's what I believe. After companies like Concom and Alta no longer make any money out of their shitty product, who knows what the future holds for the ailing photocopier industry. Ha! <laughs> It's a silly industry. <laughs> I like to take the piss out of it every now and then, or maybe more often than every now and then. You often hear me commenting on Conica Minolta in particular. Bunch of dicks. <laughs> no, we don't want that. See, this new user interface is shit. Why Conica Minolta made it like this? Just to be a gimmick. Trying to there's there's no the features are not new. The features are all like old legacy features. <sighs> And there's nothing new, really, except maybe a glitch or two. It's really like totally, they, they don't change anything. They just change the shape of the hardware and they make the user interface look different. It's mostly cosmetic, which really pisses me. I, I remember when new machines came out or were about to come out, it used to be exciting to see what new features they've thrown in. Even though feature clutter is a nuisance for the average person, when I was in my youth, I absolutely loved all those features that companies like Canon and Xerox used to put into their kit. But now it's like, it's not just with Konica and Minolta, it's every brand. They, do, they never seem to add any new features. <sighs> Although I'm against the features in the long run because when photocopiers, the way photocopiers should be designed is that they should have these features as options rather than having them already preloaded. Anyway, this is what we're doing. But basically, and basically photocopiers should be artificially intelligent and extra manual features can be added if the, at, at an extra cost if the person who bought the machine wants these features. Not, not because the features have to be in the machine. So you're paying for these features that that you don't u usually use. I'm the only, I'm probably the, the biggest user of these features. I like these features, but I know other people don't. <laughs> they just add to the clutter of the equipment. It makes it more cluttered. Anyway, that looks interesting. I'm wondering if we're going to use that as our mirror image. I did a similar a demo with a similar original showing the same two characters, except it, I only showed primarily... I think him, but now the good guy's in the image. So I'm wondering if we're going to do another demo again and make this look better. See if we can make it even better. See if we can spin it faster. But it looks good so far. So let's see if spinning this fast has made it even better. But yeah, the industry needs, needs a new direction. And basically they won't let people who want to make a better photocopier into the company. They won't allow people like myself and my future husband, Luigi, to make a difference. They just care only about the money. So that's the money they only care about. They don't give a shit about the environment. They don't give a shit about the people, how they feel about the product and all its crazy fuck-up features that it has. And, yeah. And... The machines only last, this machine, apparently the machines only last about five years because the company quits manufacturing the spare parts needed to keep the machines going and they do it after five years. So I'm really disgusted with the industry at the moment. I'm really disgusted that I couldn't keep my old C353 running because the spare parts, by decree of Konica Minolta, they wouldn't keep the spare parts in play so now we have to basically I had to replace that machine with this machine and it's like what I thought photocopiers they should last at least 10 years but the way the industry has it they just want to make things really <laughs> that don't last and it's really sad because I love photocopiers and I have done for so many decades and I just, even as a 13 or 14 year old, I always thought that 10 years was 
the the minimum amount of years that spare parts should be available. I was only a little teenager. I was in my early teens when I was thinking about spare part issues in the industry. I was thinking about that then. And now I look and I see things have gotten worse in the industry rather than better. And we just have this cockamania now that we have to... I bought a ref- I got a refurbished copier off Mytronics. It wasn't Mytronics's fault. It was Konica Minolta's fault because Konica Minolta are the ones who make the machines, and they and they're the ones that of course have make the spare parts to keep the machines functional. Photocopiers are are incredibly temperamental, and you can hear sometimes my scanner squeaks. Sometimes I hear squeaking down here, and it's just not good. And I just wish I could make a difference by being an, uh, by being a CEO of a future photocopier company. I've got dreams of, of becoming a scientist as well as a CEO. One of the thing, the main thing that's stopping me apart from the industry is my disabilities. I have problems with memory because I had a, I was had I was born with a cord around my neck. And I came out feet first, which is called the breech position. Now I'm just deciding which one I want to use. And basically, this breech position and this cord around my neck stopped the oxygen supply to my brain, which resulted in brain damage, primarily to the, op- the, the short-term memory in the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is the part of the brain, incidentally, that converts short-term memory into long-term memory. And I have problems with both those parts and other parts, which I don't fully know about. But I know that when I try to learn something, say, in a classroom, I totally fucking can't. It's so hard. And in trying to read stuff, trying to cram stuff like a normal person would by reading it over and over and over, I just can't fucking get it to go in. It's bloody awful. So the technology I look forward to to make myself able to become a CEO and a scientist to repair the broken parts is basically to have uh, quantum computer chips uh, that are designed to run at normal temperatures instead of the sub-zero that you know of in D-wave computers, for example. D-wave quantum computers need the temperature to be (laughs) at a temperature lower than if I'm correct, in deep space or something like that, I've heard really ridiculously cold temperatures. Otherwise, it it doesn't work. And we need some smart person has to design a a neuroprosthesis to fix this problem because I really want to do something. I don't want to be disabled. I don't want to be relying on the disability support pension, which which is paid out by... A com- uh, not a company, a department called Centrelink. That's in Australia, by the way. And I don't want to be reliant on that forever. I want to fucking... But I won't be, actually, because I'll be getting married to my future husband, Luigi, and he's got a lot of money. He runs a photocopier dealership, so I won't need to be on that payment, and I don't want to be on it if I don't need it. So I'll be living with him and... He'll be paying my way, but I'm going to become a volunteer at his company, and I'm going to make, I'm going to refurbish photocopiers. I'm very meticulous when I when it comes to making a good refurb machine, doing a really good job of it, making sure things are done right and not cut corners. And I want to do it for free as a volunteer, so I'll be putting my, I'll be putting some something back into the community which I really want to do. <laughs> And I want to also help around the house, cook and clean. When and Luigi's the expert at all that. He'll he'll know what to do. I'm not good at cooking and cleaning, <laughs> and I don't like those activities either. Uh, but basically, I want to be a scientist as well as a CEO. And I want to I want to basically as a CEO. If I earn two billion dollars a year building an artificially intelligent photocopier. Incidentally, with spare parts available for 60 years, not, ten, not even 10 years, but 60 years, and certainly not five years, well, I want to make a lot of money. I want that most of that money to go towards scientific experiments that I'll donate when I've 
when I'm satisfied they've been done properly. One of the things I'd really like to do in science is to harness the power of lightning as another uh, renewable source of power for mankind. And I want to I want to give I want most of my money to go to that and to also helping people who like me are disabled or or homeless or people who don't who are down and out and, and don't have any hope. I want to give them I want most of my money to go to them and the science experiments. I want to make a huge humanitarian oh just nudge this, sorry. I want to make a huge difference in a humanitarian sort of way. I want to make the world a happy place, a fair place. I want to find solutions for climate change and global warming, which is fucking things over, and it's probably the main cause of this drought that we have here in Australia. It's been said. Uh, I, it's been said that that's what's causing the drought, or, or at least in a big way causing the drought. So it's a really big problem we have is climate change and global warming. And I also, and basically I just want to, how should I put it, I want to make our machines, when, when they do wear out after 60 years and we don't have spare parts for them, well, of course, they, if, they wear, if they had spare parts, well, whatever, sorry, I'm just talking through my ass. Sometimes I get a bit knotted. Sorry, guys. But basically I want to make the machines friendly to recycle so so when they finally when finally the spare parts run out after 60 years and 60 years I'll be dead long before then well basically I want the machines to be easy to dismantle so that the different materials will be batched like the different metals aluminium steel uh whatever copper they can all be batched easily we use less plastic so we don't have to worry too much about having to, heaps of plastics to batch and all the rest of it. We've got to make this machine uh, environmentally and human friendly. And basically, yeah, the amount of money I'm thinking of keeping after $2 billion has been made in a typical year is 75 grand. 75 grand for me, 75 grand for Luigi. We'll enjoy a little bit of luxury. But we're not going to be buying Lamborghinis or anything like that or, or Porsches. We're not going to buy, uh, we're not going to have investment housing, houses. If anything, I want to, I want to pay for, for more housing department houses for people who need them. So things like that. I don't want to be an investment person in property. I'm not interested in that. I don't want empty houses just so I can make money. I want homeless people who who really don't want to be homeless to get them. Any, anyone who wants a house or a place to live can have it. But if there's the rare occasion, I'm talking really rare, if there's one person that wants to be a swag man out of, say, 25 million people, well, let him be a swag man and let him sleep under the building where, where, I, where, where, where my corporate headquarters are held. This A person like that, I'd give them 20 not $20, $50 a day so they could live, so they could camp. So if they want to be a jolly swagman in the 21st century, well, so be it. Let them. They don't have to be fucking housed if they don't want, but this is an extremely rare case because most people don't want to live as swag people. But if there's occasionally one person out of a huge number, well, so be it. Let them. Let them. I want to give them $50 a day so they can survive if that's what they want. But the rest of the people, housing for everyone who wants it. That's my two cents for the day, gotta go.